Hey guys, welcome back to Cisco Nate, and today I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot some simple issues with registering an FTD, Firepower Threat Defense Firewall, to an FMC, the Firepower Management Center. Now, as most of you know, if you've ever run into an issue where registration fails, it tells you simply that, that registration fails, and you have no idea what happened. So there's two primary reasons why failure during registration happens. And that typically is either connectivity is not there, and there's a very simple way to test it from the FTD side, or the registration key or registration information is wrong. So I'm going to show you both of those here today. I've got a Firepower 2100 that I just freshly re-imaged to FTD, and we'll go ahead and try to register it to my FMC. So I'm going to pull up the FMC here, and in my first scenario, I have a Firepower Management Center that does not have direct connectivity to the device. And I did this by applying a VLAN ACL to my ports on the switch between the FMC and the FTD. So I'm gonna show you what that registration failure looks like. So I've got my FMC up here. And next we'll navigate into the FTD, which is my Firepower 2100, 2110 to be specific. So I've gone through the initial config and I'm at the point where you say type configure, manager, add, 192.168.194.27, which is my firepower. I'm going to choose a registration key. It's going to be simple, Cisco. Uh, I do not need a NAT ID, so that should be it. It should come back here in a minute and tell me, okay, I've successfully configured this. At this point, it does not test reachability, so it won't tell you anything. And while that's happening, I'll go ahead and just pre-populate the information here for the registration. Say register device. 1.168.194.101 is my new firepower device. I'm going to call this FP2K. Registration key is Cisco. And you know what? By default, I'm going to put the new base policy in. I'm going to give it all licensing. And let's verify if it is finished. It was successfully finished. And what you can do to verify that is show managers. And you'll see what manager is configured. Now, I won't show you the key at this point. So it says, here's my key. I'm pending. I'm waiting for the FMC to reach out to me. And that's how the registration works. The FTD configures itself to be ready to accept management from the FMC. But it doesn't do anything until the FMC itself reaches out. So clicking register at this point will initiate that registration. And in a few seconds here, we will likely see that it has failed. Now it might take a little bit longer. The FMC has some um, process that's kind of a watchdog process that cycles through and checks periodically to see what happened. But the, the reality is it's going to fail. And it's going to fail because I placed a VLAN ACL simulating network connectivity was broken somewhere. So the idea is, okay, based on this innocuous message that I will receive here in a minute that literally just says it failed, here's some reasons why, we can go into the FTD, which De in detail logs what has happened and why it can't uh, be managed. Now, the connectivity failure itself will not actually be logged because it does not know when an FMC has tried to reach it because the connectivity isn't there. So you'll get the failure and we'll come back in just a minute to look at the logs. Okay, so the connection to the FTD finally failed from the FMC. Now remember, if there's no network connectivity, then the FTD never knows that the FMC is even trying to reach it. So the place we have to go to at this point to determine why it might have failed in a deterministic way is looking at the FMC logs. So this says, hey, this might be a few reasons. Uh, it could be configured to not be managed. It could have a different IP address. Connectivity could be bad, blah, blah, blah. There's a whole bunch of stuff. So let's come over to the FMC. And at this point, you want to enter expert mode CLI. And then you can... From here, you can type tail slash var slash log slash messages. And typically 100 lines will do it. Depends on how long you are behind. Oop, I forgot to format this correctly. Tail, the number of lines you want, and then the file. And so if we take a look at this file here, you can see pretty recently back that uh, it decided to abort the connection. And you can see it says that uh, it is free peer. That means it's giving up on it. Um, it's removing the peer from the pending status of registration. And if we scroll further back, at some point, we're going to see a specific point where it says, I do not have connectivity to this device. 
So let's scroll back and see if we can find that. Ah, here we go. So if you look at the SF tunnel dot uh, SF SSL, it says unable to connect to port 8305, no IPv4 connection to 192.168.194.101. This is your key bit of information from the logs on the FMC in CAT, uh, in uh, VAR log messages. This tells you that it did not connect or successfully register the FTD because of IP connectivity issues. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is actually flip over to the Firepower Threat Defense device and just show you how to check from the Firepower Threat Defense device that connectivity is not there. It's not your typical setup where you type ping and the address. You have to type ping system if you want it to ping over the management interface and then the address of your manager. Now, as you can see here, the pings are failing. So we've determined both on the FMC in a deterministic way with the logs as well as on the FTD in an indirect way with the pings that this is not working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my switch here and I'm going to remove the VLAN filter that I applied that is currently black holing the management traffic for these two. Oh, I have to config T first. No VLAN filter. Block FMC VLAN list 194. Now, I should be able to verify this really quickly by going back to the Firebrand Threat Defense, and my ping should be successful. It is now. Now, the registration information is still valid on this FTD, so we'll leave that going. I'm going to go ahead and close out my FMC window here. We're going to go back to the FMC now, hit OK, acknowledge this, and we're going to try to register again. But this time, I'm going to mistype the registration key, and we're going to go through this again. So I'm going to hit register. Oh, my connection timed out. Let me try this again. We come back here, we're going to try to register that device again, and except this time I'm going to purposely typo that registration key. And then we will deterministically determine why it failed. All right, so here we are. And again, it's gonna take a while for the timeout, so I'll see you guys in a moment. Okay guys, so we're back and the error message finally popped up, giving us these various uh, error messages of what could be causing the issue. But uh, we don't wanna just take, uh, oh, might be this, or might be this, or might be this. We want a very deterministic approach to help us solve this problem quickly. So we're gonna come back to Putty here, and we're gonna log into the FMC again. And once you're logged in, you need to go to the expert console. And we're going to the expert console because we want to take a look at the latest messages. Now, there are some very specific log directories we could go to directly for this, but the fastest and easiest way typically is to tail the last few messages, I'm going to say 250 in this case, of var log messages. Once you do this, you should be able to scroll up, and at some point you'll see... I can see some 101s. Uh, it's again saying, all right, I give up and freeing up this peer. But if we scroll further up, we should be able to start seeing information about why it failed. And it should deterministically tell us why it failed. So here it is. If you look under here and warn for the uh, SF Tunnel DSF SSL, again, you can see verify connect failed to authenticate or be authenticated by peer. Now, this is different from the error message we saw last time where it said no IPv4 connectivity. This time it's telling us it failed to authenticate. And that means our keys do not match between the two. We have connectivity, but the keys do not match. So now your question might be, well, I can see what key I used in the Firepower Management Center. It's right here. And I need to make it match on the other end. Now you may think, and I've had customers do this before, that I know definitively what I typed on that FTD. I don't know why it's not working. I'm gonna keep typing it in here and it's not working. Well, there is one way you can actually verify this. So let's go back to our 2K with FTD on it. I'm gonna go into expert mode here as well. We're gonna go into CD, Etsy, CDSF, 
And then there should be an sftunnel.conf here somewhere, I believe. Yes. So we want a cat sftunnel.conf. Now, in this file, it will show you the current configuration for your manager. Now, don't freak out. This key is not stored here permanently in plain text. It is only stored until the first time you connect, and then it is replaced by a key that is hashed that you will not be able to read. But this is a way for you to deterministically find out that I typed it here, I thought I typed it this way, and you did not. So you either go blast both of them out and try again, or you can come to one or the other sides and verify for sure what the keys are. Now I see, oh, it's Cisco here, not Cisco 123. Let me correct that. If I take this out, correct it, and hit register, in a few seconds here, you'll start seeing what I call toast pop up. There's little squares that give you notifications in the top right hand side, and it'll say uh, successfully registered device, performing initial configuration, performing initial backup, all of that information. So these are two of the most common scenarios. Uh, the lack of IPv4 connectivity, i.e. routing is wrong or broken somewhere in your network, and your key is incorrect between the two devices. But we're not guessing now, we know for sure exactly why it failed. And here's that device registration. So there you go, you know it worked.